as it moves in that one direction. That was what our analysis is about. Now, as you know, most fluids it doesn't move in that way because it's a, it moves in multi-dimensional. It's what I like to call a complex case. It's a bit more difficult to analyse. But as we shall, sell, as we shall see, it's also quite easy to use some vector algebra and get the equation. A uh, diagrammatic view to explain that is, let's just say our control volume takes an arbitrary case like this. Okay, This is our control volume. And, of, and just now, like I said, our system of particles will coincide with the control volume at time t, but at time t plus delta t, the, con the system of particles will now be outside the control volume. Yes, been displaced out of the control volume. Okay? And for the sake of analysis, we have labeled this as control volume minus 1, 1, and 2 over here. Okay? It's just labeling the separate regions so we can perform our analysis. 2 is the system of particles that's moving outside the control volume, one is the, the control volume less the system of particles, and this area over here is C V control volume minus uh, 1. So, the main objective or the main problem that we shall now face is really to re represent the extensive property or the change of extensive property of 2 and 1. And in doing so, let's just really think of a real simple case, a real simple analogy which we should all be familiar with. It's, it's about water flowing in a pipe. So this is a certain pipe over here like that. And if you could just think about it, our control volume could simply be just the, this area over here like so. And obviously in the pipe, water, some of the pipes water is flowing in, some of the pipes water flowing out. So if water is flowing in over here like so, let's just say water is flowing out from here and water is flowing out from here. Doesn't it make sense that the, the extensive property or a certain extensive property, whether it be inflow or outflow, is going to be the sum of the of where okay it's going to be the sum of our outflow of extensive property my apologies or the rate of change of the outflow of extensive property is going to be the sum of the individual pipes or the sum of the rate of change of the extensive property that goes out from the individual pipes i think that's a logical enough argument so if i were to label this pipe as a b and c we would just simply have the rate of change of the extensive property at A plus the rate of change of the extensive property at B plus the rate of change of the extensive property at C. We sum that all up, that would give us the rate of change of the extensive property that's flowing out from the whole control volume, which is what we have like that. So we're going to use that, that argument to handle this case over here, where it is taking an arbitrary shape. Now, I will just also anticipate you or just maybe give you a small introduction. We need to use some vector couplers to do that because as you can see, the, the, vector, the control, the extensive property is flowing in all sorts of directions, so that's why we need vector calculus. And let's just do that right now. Our main analysis is to, looking, to look at the outflow. We look at the outflow first of the extensive property from the control surface. Okay? So we got a certain control surface like that. And as with all calculus methods, we're going to label this as a small area. Right? And then we would have the velocity vector that moves out like so. Why? Why can, it can move in any direction. The excessive property can flow in any direction from the control surface. This is the control surface. In case you don't know what a control surface is, a control surface is that surface that surrounds the control volume, as easy as that. So, at this control surface, there's going to be the outflow of the excessive property, and that's why I have it over here. And we will have to label a normal vector like this. You will see why in a minute. So, using some basic um, differentiation or fundamentals of differentiation, a small change of the extensive property is equal to, see whether you agree with me on this, it's going to be equal to the density and the intensive property at that point, okay, multiplied by a change in the volume. Okay. Yeah, so this is our first equation, multiplied by the change in the volume. Why? Because the small change in volume multiplied by the density gives us a small mass. Small mass times the intensive property, we get the excessive property. All is good. Now, how are we going to re-express the small change in volume? This takes some arguing, which I will try to do. The small change in volume, we need to find the velocity vector that is going in the normal direction. Okay? Let's see whether I can think of a good example. See, if the, let's just say that this is water, this is like a, like a cup, a can, right? And this is water shooting out. Now, if I want to look over here, okay, and if, if, let's just say the velocity vector at this point goes something like that, it's very difficult for me to find a small change in volume at this point over here if I do not take the normal velocity component or the, the, or the velocity in the, in the normal direction. 
this is not too it's not very precise you know what i mean because let's just say if this point over here goes this way these are the velocity vectors these are the velocity vectors i'm talking about okay and if i take the, the area multiplied by this i like i get an area that's slanted this way and then from this velocity vector i get an area that's slanted this way it, the calculations get a bit muddled up so what i need is that i need to take the small change in area multiplied by the velocity in the normal direction i hope that's a good enough argument to make things more consistent and more concise. So the small change in volume is gonna be the area, okay? Now, what is the velocity? If I mark this angle as theta, it's gonna be the velocity V multiplied by cosine theta to get the normal component. Let me just have a quick check, and that is correct. But the small change in volume, as we all know, is multiplied by dt, okay? So it's just basically taking this, we are going the normal direction for a certain small change in time to get the small change in volume. So if I rewrite the whole thing, the small change in the extensive property is equal to density times V multiplied by this over here. Okay, now the next step is for us to find a small change in the extensive property that goes out, right? So this, I'm just now looking at the rate of change of the extensive property that goes out. Well, it's okay, so that is going to be equals to, we're going to take the limit as delta T tends towards zero. Because, like I said, t is a small change in time, so we let delta t tends towards zero, we get the small change, the small rate of change of the extensive property at that point. We have not taken the, the inter integral yet, okay, so it's a small change at that point. But this isn't too hard to see, it's just basically this one over here, okay, uh, plus theta. Okay, bear in mind that the density and the intensive property are functions at that point over there. That's why we have to leave it as, as this case. So later, as we take the extensive property that flows out, what we're going to do, we're just going to simply integrate that controlled surface, okay, and this thing over here, which is going to be now changed to dB, okay, dB out, okay. And that will give us, that is what we have, the extensive property, or the rate of change the extensive property that goes out. Now, you might be a bit skeptical right now at this point of time because why does the analysis look very easy? How can I just simply go from here to here? Well, I'm just going to simply tell you this. We know, or basically this equation, right, tells us the density, the intensive property, and the velocity, and the angle theta at that point. Remember, this is still at that point over there, so this is still an arbitrary case. Then later, we are just going to integrate that to give us the whole, whole parts over there. So, if, if you, you're still not convinced, if I got the control volume over here, and I got a surface over here, and a surface over here, for these two surfaces, okay, I'm going to get different values for this thing over here, you see? I'm still sticking at the arbitrary case. I'm still going to get different values for the two surfaces. But what does the integral sign say? The integral sign say, take the integration or take the sum of the whole control surface that flows out. That is why I've, I've written this and then I've written the integral sign. So, in a way, this equation does make sense. In, sorry, we have changed our intensive property that flows in. It's going to be in, integrate, okay? Now, um, let's just write this over here first, okay? S, CS in, right? So, these are, we're now dealing with the in, extensive property that goes inside the surface, CS in, okay? And it's going to be the exact same one, which is cosine theta dA. However, I would have to introduce a negative sign over here, and that negative sign is important. Here, here we go again. Why is that negative sign important? Remember how I defined the normal vector? The control surface is over here like that, right? This is a small dA. The normal vector is defined as going out of the control surface. So if this is the control surface, the normal vector is going out like that, given by the normal vector like so. However, we know that for the, for the influx of the extensive property at the control surface, okay, it is in opposite direction to the normal vector. That is why I need to introduce a negative sign. It does make sense if you do think about it. Okay, now this equation and this equation over here can be rewritten in another way. Then I can rewrite this as integrate CS out, okay, the density multiplied by the intensive property, and now I will introduce our vectors, which will come in handy. V, that v dot with the normal vector A, dA. And likewise, this one is gonna be minus CS in density intensive property V dot with the normal vector A. Okay, remember again that before we integrate, we are all we are taking all the arbitrary cases. So basically, these two are gonna change based on the surface that I'm looking at. It's still okay. We know that for a projection of the velocity vector onto n, we'll just simply take the dot product if the angle is theta, which the angle is theta over here. So basically, we can take the dot product. 
And finally, we will just simply write the rate of change of out dot with subtract. Re remember, because this was in our original one dimensional analysis, this equation over here, it's going to be this one, okay, subtract with this one, which is basically this one, subtract minus minus this. So is this going to be add up with this quantity over here? And we'll just simply write that as integrate the control surface, the density, intensive property, velocity vector dot with the normal vector, and dA. Okay, where I just simply change the integral sign to specify the control surface, taking into account control surface in and control surface out. So if I were to re-implement that into our Reynolds equation, we sorry, our Reynolds transport theorem, we'll get the we'll simply get okay, and there we go, our final equation, or basically the equation that we'll spend most of our time dealing with of Reynolds transport theorem.